getting answers for Western Massachusetts. This is Western Mass News on ABC 40. Drivers dealt with some serious dangerous conditions on the roads this morning as they made their way to work and school. Welcome to Western Mass News at noon. I'm Amanda Callahan. A flash freeze causing roads to be extremely icy out there. We have live team coverage as conditions quickly improve this afternoon. Western Mass News reporter Kristen Burnell is over in Southwick and we have meteorologist Dan Brown here in studio on standby. Let's begin with Kristen who has more on the impacts this morning's weather has had on local school districts. Kristen. Amanda, I'm here at Woodland Elementary School in Southwick where bus transportation services operated on a two hour delay. This of course due to the weather conditions this morning and the icy roads. The Southwick Tall and Granville Regional School District posting on Facebook this morning urging parents to wait until road conditions improve before driving their kids to school. The acting principal of Woodland Elementary telling Western Mass News about half of the students were impacted by the bus delays this morning. School officials adding all late arrivals and absences will be excused for the day. And Southwick wasn't the only school district dealing with school bus delays this morning. The Agawam, Northampton and West, Spring West Springfield School District were also impacted with some buses having to pull over to the side of the road and wait for roads to be treated. Aside from school, some first responders also had a tough time on the roads this morning. Western Mass News cameras were rolling when a fire engine started sliding on Nottingham Street over in Springfield. Also in Springfield, a second Western Mass News crew stopped spotted cars in standstill traffic on I-291 around 9 o'clock this morning. Several cars with their hazard lights on coming to a complete stop. Our newsroom also received several reports from viewers about crashes happening across Western Mass. Now the good news is here that conditions have improved across roads. For now on weather conditions happening right now, I'll toss things over to first warning meteorologist Dan Brown. Yes indeed, Kristen. Yeah, absolutely. Things changed in a hurry this morning. You know, we only had a little bit of freezing drizzle and freezing rain, but we were talking about it this morning, how it doesn't take much when you have temperatures below freezing to cause those icy, icy conditions. And boy, did that happen fast around 7.30, 8 o'clock. The good news now, though, is that temperatures are coming up. So conditions have improved pretty quickly as well. We're at 36 degrees in Springfield. It's still gloomy out there. We still have some showers, but the winter weather advisory has been discontinued and most spots now are above freezing. Not to say that we still don't have a few icy spots, especially right along the Connecticut River in Franklin County, for example, Greenfield at like 32 and a half, 33 degrees. Elsewhere, though, readings are pretty much above freezing. We're 35 in Holyoke, 41 now in Ware, 38 in Palmer. So readings will continue to come up and we should see t temperatures topping off right around 40, 42 degrees this afternoon. We're not done with the moisture yet, though. We still have some plain rain showers moving through the area and we'll continue with that for a few hours as we go into the afternoon. You can see the showers extend down to Connecticut as well and down into Connecticut it's milder there too. They had icy conditions this morning too but everywhere now for the most part we're seeing improving conditions with those temps coming up. So one o'clock will be in the upper 30s with some showers, maybe a leftover shower around four o'clock or so. But as the kids are heading home and for the evening commute, we're seeing improving weather conditions and then we'll dry it out. The front moves through this evening, the breeze picks up and then temperatures will start to slide. And by morning, we're going to be down into the 20s and it'll be a blustery, chilly start to your day tomorrow. But at least the sun is back partially tomorrow with temps in the 30s. After that, we're tracking some snow for your Friday morning commute. Well, the very latest on that coming up in just a few minutes from now. Amanda, back to you. Thanks, Dan. New at noon, the Springfield Fire Department was called to a multi-vehicle crash involving a school bus this morning. That crash happening on Chestnut Street around 8.30 a.m. Officials say one person had to be removed from their vehicle and they were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Thankfully, no passengers on the school bus were hurt. Also new this hour, the Holyoke Fire Department was busy responding to several crashes this morning. Officials posting this photo on their Facebook page urging drivers to avoid roads, especially in the areas of Route 141, Route 202, Cherry Street, and off ramps from Route 91. You can see here several cars off the road, one smashed up pretty bad. A real mess out there earlier in those icy conditions. Now switching gears, Springfield Public Schools put a pause on high school athletics just before the holiday break due to a rise in COVID-19 cases. And today, officials are expected to meet to discuss if winter sports can resume. The city of Springfield's chief health official tells Western Mass News that the decision was made with the advice and consent of the school district's athletic director. And while no one wants to see students take a timeout, she calls it a wise decision based on the recent uptick in COVID-19 cases. 
we understand, we want our students to play. But we also know that it's going to be critical. Keeping our students in school is our primary goal. Colton Harris also says some high school teams had a positivity rate of over 25%, including close contact sports like wrestling and basketball. According to school officials, student athletes were tested for COVID-19 at the beginning of this week. Those results will help decide if the pause on winter sports will be lifted or not. Amherst Pelham Regional School officials provided an update on COVID-19 testing last night in their district. Superintendent Michael Morris says they've seen an increase in pooled testing enrollment in their schools. They were able to send their students home for winter break with testing kits. and They also gave out two tests to their staff members before school resumed on Monday. And now they're looking to continue to expand their testing efforts. We have um, started a program today where students or staff members who are close contacts in the school setting uh, can uh, pick up a test, a uh, rapid antigen test, to be able to take home with them and, you know, offer that peace of mind, especially as we're seeing more, quote unquote, breakthrough infections with Omicron. This program under DESE guidance is usually only available for unvaccinated students and staff, but while supplies last, they'll be offering it to every member of the school community. The number of COVID-19 cases continuing to rise dramatically across Western Mass. Mask mandates have been reinstated in multiple cities and towns, but local leaders say more still needs to be done to slow the spread of the virus. Our own Chris Pisano has the details. Long lines of cars as hundreds wait for hours at the Eastfield Mall COVID-19 testing site. The crush of cars so heavy, police shut down the line early on Sunday and Monday. By Tuesday, people began waiting in line before sunrise, hoping to beat the rush before the site opened at 7 a.m. With resources stretched to the limit, local leaders say something needs to be done and done quickly. I think that if we can have an additional regional center here in the western Massachusetts, particularly in the general vicinity of Springfield, uh, for our surrounding neighborhoods and communities, I think that would alleviate some of the congestion. Gonzalez would also like to see expanded staffing and expanded hours, making it possible to test more people and easier for those who can't make it during the current limited times of operation. But ultimately, he says there's a need to get more people, especially young people, vaccinated. We're hoping for people to uh, understand that uh, the COVID is real. Uh, it's impacting younger people at alarming rates now, and that uh, we're hoping that uh, they could move forward uh, into the vaccination era. It's a sentiment echoed by Bishop Talbert Swan, president of the NAACP of Greater Springfield. Swan concedes it may be hard to convince some about the vaccine. We've been um, doing vaccine um, equity work. Uh, we've been educating the community. We've been going door to door, uh, encouraging people to get vaccinated, checking on the status of those um, who we interact with and providing education. There's a lot of distrust, particularly in the African-American community. Swan says results from the door-to-door -door education efforts in Springfield neighborhoods have been mixed. But with continued effort and outreach, more people are choosing to get the shots. Our folks are dedicated to the task and hopefully we're making an impact. Chris Pisano, Western Mass News. Over in Ludlow, the Hamden County Correctional System is dealing with a surge of COVID-19 cases. The Sheriff's Department tells Western Mass News they've had 85 staff members and 29 inmates test positive for COVID-19. Thankfully, no hospitalizations, but one parent of an inmate at the Ludlow Corrections Facility tells us inmates have been on lockdown for three weeks, and he says he hasn't heard from his son in several days. In, in, in my son's case, he's a cancer survivor. And, and by him being there without what I believe, without basically any protection at all, at the mercy of the facility, we really worry, you know, we're very concerned that he may get, you know, this uh, infected, get infected with this, with COVID. Officials say more than 74% of staff members are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and all their inmates have been offered a vaccine. Nationally, 28 states are seeing their average daily cases at least double over the past week, and 112,000 people are currently hospitalized with COVID-19 as the debate over schools continues. Western Mass News correspondent Rena Roy has the latest. 
As the country reports a stunning 828,000 new infections, another pandemic daily high following a holiday backlog and surging demand for tests, the debate over in-person learning rages on. So I encourage the states and school districts to use the funding that you still have to protect your children and keep the schools open. Officials in Chicago echoing that sentiment, insisting hospitalizations across the city are low. Our schools are safe. There is no evidence that our schools have ever been unsafe. Still, classes canceled for its roughly 300,000 public school students after 73 percent of the teachers union voted for remote learning, arguing the surge in COVID cases makes classrooms unsafe. Going into schools puts us at risk, um, puts our students and families at risk of contracting the coronavirus. The Omicron variant is now estimated to account for 95 percent of new cases in the U.S. Today, the CDC's advisory panel voting on whether to recommend Pfizer's booster for teens ages 12 to 15. Shots in arms could come as early as Thursday. Meantime, the agency under fire for its evolving guidance, despite pushback, not requiring testing for asymptomatic people to end isolation after five days, instead leaving it open saying people who have access and want to test should do so, adding if positive on the fifth day, isolate for another five. If negative, you can go out with a mask while making sure to avoid high-risk people, travel, and eating and drinking around others. I think what CDC is feeling is the constraint of the fact that most Americans can't easily get a test. But from a science point of view, getting a test is the right thing to do. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Just into our newsroom, the state police detective unit assigned to the Berkshire District Attorney's Office is investigating an apparent accidental death at Jiminy Peak Mountain Resort in Hancock. Officials say 30-year-old Kimberly Francor died after a snow groomer collided with a snowmobile she was operating. That incident remains under investigation. Coming up, the Capitol attack investigation is heating up as the committee is looking into text messages between former President Donald Trump and a Fox News host. We'll explain next. And the government may be looking into distributing another round of COVID relief. Find out what this will entail when we come back.
All right, welcome back everybody. The time right now is 12:14, and boy, did things change fast this morning, didn't they? I mean, we had cloudy skies, we had just dry conditions, and just like that, a little bit of freezing rain moved in, and it did so with temps below freezing, hence freezing rain. But it's been so cold, so that rain really uh, iced up on many surfaces, including untreated roads and well, sidewalks and driveways. That was between about 7:30 and 9:30. But things have improved since. We are now sitting at 36 degrees in Springfield, so we are above freezing in town. Look at Boston and Providence. Wow, 50 in Boston, 52 in Providence, and we have a lot of warm air, but it's overriding the colder air at the surface. That's basically what gave us our freezing rain. But at least now temperatures have come up above freezing in most spots. There are some communities, particularly in Franklin County, where we still might be dealing with some icy conditions. But even there, temperatures will be coming up. I think we'll probably top off around. 40, 42 degrees by the time it's all said and done this afternoon. We still do have some rain showers that we have to go through for the rest of the afternoon as well. They'll be spotty in nature, but for the most part, it is plain rain, and I think we'll start to dry out later on this afternoon and as we go into the evening. So, hanging on to some showers about 3 or 4 o'clock. Temperatures will pretty much come up to around 40. We'll hang there for a while. Then skies begin to clear out this evening, and we'll see temperatures fall off so that by morning we're down into the 20s. So gloomy with some showers this afternoon, but again, they're mainly rain showers now. Tomorrow, dry and blustery, but at least we'll have some sunshine. Pretty seasonable tomorrow, and we're still tracking the potential for some snow. It looks like it'll be Friday morning, Friday morning's commute, with that snow moving in right now, it still looks like snowfall amounts will be on the lower side, but nevertheless, it'll be lining up with our Friday morning commute. So the timing, not the greatest. Tomorrow will be blustery, chilly, temperature seasonable though, and will be dry. And then this area of low pressure will head our way, but it looks as though the bulk of the heavy moisture will line up to our south as dry air tries to work in. So we're going to be on the northern side of this storm system. So here's our future cast. This is tomorrow afternoon around one o'clock. We'll see sunshine, some high and mid-level clouds starting to stream in with temps in the 30s. Clouds thicken up tomorrow night. This brings us all the way to about midnight where we're still dry. It's not until, say, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning we're going to see some of that light snow moving into Western Mass. It'll be around during the morning commute with temps in the 20s, so it'll probably have a pretty easy time sticking. The snow will be lighter in nature, and it's fairly fast moving, so I think it's out by about 9 or 10 o'clock, and then we'll actually see some clearing skies in the afternoon. So still... Still some uncertainty. The track, however, looking as though it's going to be a little further to the south into the east. All snow for Western Mass from about 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. Of course, you know, within a few hours of that, it is quick moving, but it is lining up with your morning commute. It looks as though it'll be minor amounts with a couple of inches of snow with more off to the east, particularly again uh, south in, uh, of Boston and near that area. That's where I think the snowfall amounts will be greatest. And it'll be light in nature. Now keep in mind that light fluffy snow is easy to move around, but it does stick pretty quickly and it piles up pretty quickly as well. So the bulk of this falls around sunrise Friday morning, a few hours before, a few hours after. Two to four inches of snow the way it looks now. Things can still change, of course. Notice four to six, Worcester County and points east. One to three north and west. Slight change in the track would mean different snowfall amounts, but this is what we're thinking at this point. We would pick up a couple of inches of snowfall, and it's likely done by about 9, 10 o'clock on Friday morning, and then the system moves out. As it's strengthening, it's bringing down another batch of cold air, and it'll get blustery around here on Friday as well. In fact, the trash can wind meter for Friday afternoon will put it at a 2 with gusts up to perhaps about 30 miles per hour. So for this afternoon, leftover rain showers as temperatures continue to inch up. We'll top off in the lower 40s, and then we'll dry things out as we head into the evening. Partial clearing tonight, temps fall into the 20s, and a little bit of a breeze too. So by tomorrow morning, wind chills are back down into the teens, but tomorrow we should see some sunshine, high and mid-level clouds. Highs come up into the mid, maybe some upper 30s tomorrow, and then that generally light snow Friday morning. But of course, that'll slow things down for your Friday morning's commute with a couple of inches of accumulation. I think it's done by mid to late morning. Some partial clearing in the afternoon, blustery and chilly, cold Saturday, and then Sunday, a wintry mix perhaps in the afternoon. It looks to be light, but that could create a few problems on the roadways, a minor system in general. And then Monday and Tuesday, cold. Look at Tuesday, only in the teens for highs, some Arctic air for next week. All right, that's your forecast. More weather coming up in a few minutes. Amanda, back over to you. Thanks, Stan. The House Select Committee's investigation into